Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Dabs of Reality Show. I'm your host, Tom Crawshaw. We're at episode number four of Your Brain on Drugs. And today, we're gonna to be talking about your brain on MDMA. Now, MDMA, also known as ecstasy, comes with a lot of associations, assumptions, and connotations, but I'm gonna break down the science of what's happening in the brain and the body when we ingest this substance. It's not a classical psychedelic in those terms, but does have similar effects to some of the psychedelics we've spoken about in this series. Now, first of all, if you're new here to the channel, please make sure you hit that subscribe button below, and let's open up the conversation. Drop me a comment below if you want me to talk about another specific molecule or substance that I've not covered so far, let me know in the comments below. And if you've had any experiences worth sharing, highly recommend you share that in the comments below. And you never know, I might do a compilation video of all my subscribers' really amazing experiences. Also, before we get into the content for today, I need to tell you that this video is purely for educational, informational, and harm reduction purposes. I'm just sharing what I've learned in my own experience, the studies that I've read, and uh, no way am I condoning that you go out and experiment with these substances yourself. They're illegal in pretty much most countries around the world, and uh, this is just purely for informational purposes only. All right, guys, so let's get started with the basics, shall we? MDMA, I'm gonna put the molecule up on screen, and it's, an, it's a, basically it's a derivative of amphetamine and acts as a stimulant and a hallucinogen, producing effects of enhanced sensory pleasure, distortions of time, increase in self-awareness and empathy. So that's kind of the, the loved up feeling that users report from taking MDMA. Now MDMA has been used across the world in forms, people call it molly, ecstasy, whatever you call it. It was first synthesized in a German pharmaceutical laboratory in 1912 and it was supposed to be used as a parent compound to synthesize medicines that control bleeding strange right how the hell that got into the hands of people in the rave scene of the 60s and 70s i do not know but um it did and uh, the rest is history as they say so how does mdma work in the brain now, as I mentioned before, it's not a classic psychedelic, but we do know that it works on the serotonin receptors and the serotonin system inside the brain and the body. MDMA also jacks up the systems of dopamine and noepinephrine. And more importantly, it also blocks the reuptake of these molecules in the synapse, which basically means these molecules stay around for longer and have a more profound effect at the receptor site which has obviously more profound effects psychologically. Now serotonin really is the key neurotransmitter here. It's, it's giving us that sensation of, of loving everyone around us, loving yourself, feeling connected with other people, high-fiving people, feeling empathy for the people around you. Now serotonin is what's responsible for those loved up feelings, those feelings of connectedness, wanting to share your entire life with a stranger and having empathy for others. So what are some of the common effects of MDMA upon ingestion? Well, typically you'll start to feel things around 45 minutes after ingestion and you're gonna feel like you are coming up. This is what we kind of call it on the, on the way to the peak experience. Now the come up can be quite uncomfortable depending on the dosage that you have. You may get body chills, you may get tingles, you may have some lightheadedness, you may feel nauseous, but just know that those effects will either subdue or pass and you'll get on to the good stuff. Now the positive effects that many users report include, and I'm gonna flash these up on screen as well, an enhanced sense of well-being, increased extroversion, emotional warmth, empathy towards others, a willingness to discuss emotionally charged memories. And in addition, people report enhanced sensory perception as a hallmark of MDMA, and this is probably why it was so commonly used in the nightclub and the rave scene. Music sounded better and it gave you this stimulation, this stimulant action, as well as the serotonin making you feel connected and loved with everybody around you. And imagine if you have a room of thousands of people all on a similar level 
uh, that can be quite a magical experience, almost spiritual in some cases. Now, hopefully from some of these benefits, you can see why it might be useful to use MDMA to treat PTSD or any particular condition that has been created or has manifested from a really intense traumatic emotional experience. So MDMA is currently being trialed as a potential therapy for PTSD. So it's a little bit different than you would if you were to take MDMA in a nightclub, for example. This is more of a comfy setting at home or with a psychiatrist, maybe with your partner. It's been used really well for couple sessions, for bonding, for talking through issues. And uh, it totally makes sense. The empathy and the willingness to be super honest and open, uh, really some of the hallmarks of MDMA and I think could have a massive beneficial effect in a therapeutic setting. So I just want to flash up the drug harm scale that Professor David Nutt put together. Now you can see MDMA is again lower down on the list than tobacco and alcohol. I believe this is what he got kicked out of the UK government for. He was saying that ecstasy is less dangerous than alcohol, which is actually true. It's just the news stories that you may have heard of people dying of, of taking uh, the wrong kind of ecstasy or a contaminated pill with some other kind of substance in it. And I'm going to rattle off some of the more negatives of MDMA and what you can do to battle them or overcome them. So I'm going to flash these on screen as well. We've got things like nausea, jaw clenching, dehydration, hypothermia, lack of appetite, illogical thoughts, hot flashes, chills, restless legs. The most important things to consider here is uh, dehydration, right? And your body temperature. So these are some of the common causes of death from MDMA in the nightclub scene when taken recreationally. Now, I would advise if you are gonna experiment to do it in more of a therapeutic way, if there are some issues that you wanna work through. Now, typically when people die on MDMA, they are dehydrated. On MDMA, your body is unable to regulate your body temperature. So if your temperature starts to go up, there is no recourse. So it's important that we stay hydrated, we stay cool, and we give ourselves the time to cool the body down. Otherwise, hypothermia plus dehydration uh, it's not good for the heart at all. Now there has also been some studies done on regular and long-term use and it's not looking good. Now one thing in particular, serotonin depletion, not a good thing to have on any kind of long-term basis. You are gonna see after the MDMA session a depletion in serotonin, but that should get restored back to natural levels. Sometimes it may take a few weeks, sometimes it may take a little bit longer than that. So imagine if you were taking this every week, your serotonin levels are gonna consistently keep stepping down. You're gonna recover a bit and then step down, recover a bit, step down. It's just not a great path to go down. So obviously the, the negative effects of serotonin depletion are gonna be far wide and reaching. Things like depression, anxiety are gonna be the most common. This is why we treat depression with SSRIs, which are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, which basically allows the, the synapse to hold on to more of the serotonin that's getting produced in the body. But long-term and frequent heavy usage of MDMA could lead to permanent brain damage memory loss and things that we don't really want to be doing to our bodies. So in terms of a tool for therapy, MDMA is currently in phase three trials with the FDA for treatment of PTSD, like I mentioned earlier. So if these trials go ahead and they're approved and uh, everything looks good, then we may see MDMA being offered in the healthcare system to treat PTSD, which could be an absolute game changer. So I just want to share a quote here from Robin Carthart Harris, again, one of the uh, top researchers in the psychedelics field. And he's saying the hypothesis was that MDMA would make the negative memories less painful. He says that we saw a boosted brain response to positive memories and a weaker response to negative ones. So this fits the idea that MDMA can help people 
access negative memories without being overwhelmed by them. And they might be able to change the way they feel about what happened. So this is essentially a process of reframing emotional trauma by facing it while on MDMA and uh, being able to, to look at things uh, from a different perspective. So listen guys, that's all I've got for you in this video. I hope you've enjoyed today's content and this particular episode of Your Brain on Drugs. We've got more to come, so if there's something that you want me to talk about in these videos and do some research on, then let me know in the comments below. But until next time guys, I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I know your time is extremely valuable. So if you've enjoyed today's content, please consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell so you get a notification next time I release another one of these videos. You can also leave me a comment below and let me know what part of this video resonated the most with you or simply click that like button to let me know you enjoyed this content. And if you want to get your hands on a free 12 minute guided meditation that I recorded to help you manifest your dreams and create whatever you want in your life, go ahead and click the link in the description for your free download. And if you want to check out all the latest blog posts on my blog, dabsofreality.com, the link is down there below as well, along with my Instagram and my Facebook page, if you want to consider following me on those platforms. Until next time, catch you on the flip side.